Hi everyone, my name is Simon and this is Guatemala Cafe. Now unlike the other videos, I normally actually unpack the game and lay it out. But today, as it's a kind of a development kind of game, I'm actually going to leave this set up. I'm going to talk you through how you play it. And then I'm going to talk to you about my review and also the other side of the board at the end of the review. So let me show you what's going on. We are in Guatemala. And the aim of the game is to get the most points, which is centivos, that's money, that's this stuff down here that I've put in these little pink uh, cases. And you do that by placing out various people. These are your workers of different colors, and you can have different um, plantations that you basically represent. So I'm representing blue, and there are other colors for other players. We have over here, sorry about this, orange. We have got yellow, and we've got purple or lavender at the far end there, which looks like this. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be starting using this kind of merchant and you're basically perusing what is available to be acquired. So you start any way you like and then you move one to three spaces. You do that and then you can buy something along one of these lines. Now everybody starts off with 15 centivos. So you start off some money. That's your resource. It's worth nothing at the end of the game. But that resource is allowing you to buy something. You can buy anything you like, as long as it's up to three. When you take something, so you take, say, one of these things here, you replace it with a piece of road, and that goes there. So you take one of these things, as many as you like, up to three. So you can take um, a settlement, which I'll come on to. You can take a ship. But the most important thing you want to be taking are people. So if you look over to this board, this is now where you're playing things out. Now, I'm playing blue, as I mentioned. And I started picking up these uh, naked, these wooden colour pieces. And I started placing them up here. We're trying to have these people pick this coffee in Guatemala and basically transport it through the, the lowlands, through the sort of savannah, the scrubland, away from the mountains to the boats. When you can do that and it reaches all the way to the boats and it's connected via these roads that you pick up, you can sell it and you'll get some points. I'll come on to points in a moment. So with that money, you're able to go out and get stuff. And up here, it's cheap because it's far away from the boats. The reason to get it to the boats is it doubles for each boat on there. I'll come back to the boats in a moment. So going up the top is cheapest. It costs you one centivo to go in this region up here. And remember, I'll be packing this away and we'll kind of see what's underneath this in a moment, in addition to the other sides, which is important. This is set up as a two player game presently. So over here, you can see I've been starting to place people here because it's cheap. Now, if ever I run out of money, I might want to score. You score by touching one of these things here. So what you do is instead of being able to get maybe some roads that are now there, maybe getting some people, some settlements or a boat, you can take one of these coffee sacks. It's basically a shipping any coffee that you've picked. So if you've got some people out and you have a settlement, you're able to sell the amount of people will give you that out of points. So in this case, I'd get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'd have my marker here and I'd get eight points. So I then take this because I've scored, say the color, in fact, it'd be this one because I went for the, the beige, the naked, the wooden one. And I place it over here on this marker track. So the first one I place is down here, bottom of the track. Now what happens is that starts to shorten the length of the game. So as you'll see, purple is over here at this moment, because if they now pick up something to score, they will trigger the end of the game, and in fact would win if blue didn't do it first. So the aim of the game is to get as most points as you can, but where you're going to be crossing over these things. So as an example, I'm going to be scoring this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points, and I get eight centivos. So you always get eight centivos. You also get however many workers you have out, as long as they're connected to a settlement, and it has to be your settlement. You identify it as being yours because you're going to have your marker there. So you have one of these for each of the different colours. You can only ever have one of one colour. So you can only ever have one white, one brown, one red, and one black. So you take this remember and you place it down. This is where it gets interesting. You can block somebody. Everybody starts off with a number of these coffee bags. So what happens in a two player game, as an example, everybody gets 12 and five remain in the bag. The rest are placed out here and a random one is placed face down. I think it's on this space here. 
so you never know what it is. So you could go here and just hope it's going to score your colour. If not, you're going to lose out. So I'm going to score for, say, the naked, the beige one, and then I score it. And I take another one of my 12 things that I have, and they're secrets. Nobody knows what I have. And I'm going to place it here. In this case, I happen to have another beige. I chose to go for another beige because if I can get here again, I can score it again and get some more points. So now imagine we have now connected up all the roads. If you connect up all the roads and you have a ship of your colour, you're not only going to score, say eight, you're going to double it for each ship. So you can now get 16. If you have a third or another ship there, so two ships, it's now only worth 24 points. So you can get more ships out, so you can even get a maximum of 32 if you have all of them out. Now, there are costs to first place out a ship. It's two to go here, two here, three, three, four, four. Now, as you actually spend the use of a ship, what happens is that goes away, and anything there in that side of it will just move up. It discourages you, therefore, for keep on building. So what you need to balance is between getting workers, get in the settlement so that you can claim it and score it, and ideally get some roads in place to then start getting the bigger points with a ship. Now, these routes, especially in a two-player board, and I'll show you it's very different on the other side, means that uh, white in this case, which actually happened to win the game, they're purple, so I happened to lose by five points at the end. My final score was 35, and they won with about 40. What will happen, because I actually happened to get another one of these, and it turned out it was too late and I would have lost the game. So in this case, White started building up this road. Now I'm over here, and what I chose to do is just build a piece of road that has to be on the either the bottom half or the side of the, of the settlement. Normally on the side, I think, is thematically meant to be right for some reason, but in this case, you, uh, I happen to just piggyback and copy what White did and get all the way down to here. And as you can see, there are different costs where these little settlements can go. So, if you want to go down here, it's going to cost you six, it could cost you five because it's further out, it costs you more with roads, three and four, uh, there's twos, and I think that is, there are some threes up here. So in this case, you could choose to go quite expensive and have a very quick and fast thing. So the strategy there is between going for building around here, remember it's expensive, it's going to cost you three people to build down here, and just to make you aware, here are some costs down here. So you need to be aware and consider what you want to be doing. So tell you what I'll do, I'll just chuck that up there, it's nice and easy. And that's the underside of the box. So, remember, to get points, you have to have workers, and you can only have one of one colour, so black in this case is now boxed off, but it's still going to score when black comes along. You've got red over here, which is going to score, in fact red won't score anything to do with ships because there's nothing connecting it, but should we reach a place with a red bag, then it'll actually score well, one, two, th three points. Now in this case, I happen to have lots of red bags. So depending on what you've drawn, you can start thinking maybe what you want to go for. You could choose to either try and get it, replace them out and get them out on the board, or you could be using them to block. So if I know that uh, my opponent is going for loads of these red people, I've got tons of red to block them. So I could start going one to three spaces, and so maybe I just go, I don't know, let's say I go to here for one, and take black. So now they know I'm not going for black uh, for red. They go here and they can hoover up that person. So remember, it's a balancing act. And the resources will keep on depleting because you're spending more and more over here. Eventually, you're going to have to score to get some money. The downside is you could be giving them some points or giving yourself both points. So one thing I made a mistake in, I chose to go for black, scoring myself three points, and I gave the opponent one point as well. So just make sure you're aware. Blue is here and I'm scoring black here. So you've got some hidden bags, obviously five will never know, so you don't know what your opponent have. Um, I chose to block um, my opponent, purple, a few times, but they were able to get some big scores on whites because I ran out of white sacks to block them off. Anything that's used, remember, goes over here, so it starts filling up that board, and the board, remember, starts empty apart from laying everything else over here. Now, in terms of setup, this was why I didn't want to do it straight out of the box. It takes almost 10 minutes to find the relevant colour, especially when brown and uh, I think red, they're quite similar colours, even black is quite a similar colour. So when I set up this game, I'm always nervous thinking, 
that uh, I'm missing a piece. But thankfully, it's a very completionist game and, and everything is there. Remember, there are none of these at the beginning. And once they're all placed out, that's it. You cannot place any more. And suddenly, you might be in a situation whereby you need a piece of road to connect something up to get some points. And suddenly, you're going to be stuck. So I'm now just going to tilt it slightly. And then for you can see me on camera, and I can talk to you about the designers, uh, what I think of it, and um, basically about other games similar to this. So let me just do this, do this, and I think I'll try and see if I can stay in shot. So, hello, just about vi uh, visible here, I think, uh, for lean as I think you have to do in this game. So you have two bags, everything goes back in the same bag. So it doesn't come with many bags, which is a bit annoying to be honest. Uh, luckily, all these pieces are different sizes. Uh, they're not metal, they're just cardboard, which is quite standard for most of German manufactured games. All of these things go back in this black cloth bag, so you can't see what they are. And when you take these out, when you start placing them face down here, so they're all face up, apart from the bottom one. This one here, you can feel there's a slight sticker on them, and you can just make sure you can't tell which one it is when you place it in there. Additionally, all of these little tokens to define who is responsible for each of these, they all go back in the same bag as well. Now also, you can't have, so black here, I can't have black of somebody else next to me because, as you can imagine, you can't tell who's who. So now we know who owns this one because this little guy's here, and you can work that out there. So these designers, uh, this is a game by the Brants. This is Inca and Marcus Brant. They have been, um, they don't have any games in the top 100 list. However, this is on Board Game Geek. They do have the highest rated game is Village. It's at 141 on Board Game Geek, followed by around 178 at the time of recording. That game is called Rajas of the Ganges, which I highly recommend. I give that game an 8 out of 10. The next highest rated games are pretty much all of the Unlock series of games. Now, Unlock is a game that I've, uh, so not Unlock, Exit. Now, the Exit games and Unlock, I think, are really good. And uh, I highly recommend them. I've only played a few of them, very keen to play more. You can only play them once. If you haven't seen my undo videos, please check out them. In addition, check out there's other videos on Detective, there's videos on um, Escape Tales as well. So these designers, they've also made one of my top 10 games of all time, which if you haven't seen that video, check that out. And that's called Knock Mal. It's what I believe to be the best roll and write game. And as you might tell from some of the games, I'm quite into strategy games. And that in particular, even though it has luck in it, I think it's the most strategic dice game. I think in total, actually, is the whole time. So until I play something else, we'll have to see. I haven't played the sequel yet. We'll have to see about that. So this game came out in 2006. At the time of recording, the ranking um, or rating is about 6.3, which is quite low for, obviously, those guys. And the game that came out a year after this is a video I've already recorded called Darjeeling. So made another game about a drink. Out of interest, this rule book is only in German, so that's maybe why these rules are quite useful. This one is by Eggert Spiel, which is the uh, obviously German company as well. Something else to bear in mind is the fact that this um, box, when we got it, it was a few years after the release, and it comes with a bag of coffee. These are coffee beans. Now it turned out the beans were so dry, this was bought at the local game shop. We ended up actually, I did uh, blend them, but they were just like dust, so we couldn't drink them. So you do find this game now, unfortunately, and um, even though it was in shrink, we weren't able to recommend you, you drink the coffee. Um, to be honest, I would still have done it, but at the time I didn't think we had a fills machine, so that's why we passed. So what do I think of the game? Lots of options. I still haven't got around showing the other side of the board yet, but what I think you might enjoy, I'm trying to find if, I, if there was an extra bag, is the fact that there are lots of different things to consider. Do you go for, as I mentioned, that strategy around going for sacks? Do you go for that strategy around choosing to vary the amount of people that you have in terms of the colours? I think you shouldn't go for all the colours. You're going to end up just only scoring a few points. That multiplier isn't going to be very good for you. You could get some ships out and dominate the ship trade. The downside of dominating the ship trade is you get in, end up with very few um, centivos left each round, and someone else is going to be scoring. So in terms of playability, it plays very well as a two, it's quite tight as a two. The game can uh, end quite quickly uh, when you suddenly get round around this point. Literally one turn with those ships 
especially if now those roads are built and the game will end. You need to be aware of that and see if you can piggyback and help somebody else, block people, make sure they can't take advantage of these level two um, settlements. These are cheap places to get your coffee out. Remember, you can just try and go for the fact of going down here, going cheap. And I've just found the other bag I was looking for. So that is something to bear in mind. The duration, it plays in under an hour. Remember, it takes about 10 or 15 minutes to actually fully set up the game. But in terms of playing as a two, you're looking to pay about, about 45 minutes. That's the duration to spend playing this game. So in terms of the other side of the map, as I said, this is the uh, initial setup. We normally always play the setup because it's evenly distributing, I believe, and I think I can tell everything. I don't think anything has got anything more than twice, like two people in any particular, well, this one actually has got three. So I picked up that my first turn without even analyzing it too much. So that's something to be aware of. Remember the game ends immediately when you cross that final point. So let me show you the other side. We have got this side here. This is the three to four player side. Now, as you can see, you end up actually having a different layout. It's the same kind of situation. You can have the cheap, the medium, and the expensive area. You've got lots of different ships to go for, and suddenly people can start competing, remember, moving people up. Additionally, there are certain routes, so that you no longer have those roads whereby you can piggyback. If you're going somewhere, you could choose to go cheap up here, somebody else goes down here, and they know that you're the sole person who's gonna be filling these in, there's no cross hatching, you can't start building a cross, and that's something to be aware of. Aside from that, there are some extra tiles. So if you're playing as three player, you're gonna start covering over certain locations, which you'll tell you in the manual. For example, you're gonna be covering over things like that. So suddenly they're not all gonna be available. And I'll tell you where that's gonna be relevant. And finally, let me show you the other side, which is actually, I think, for the other board, for when you're using those things. And then we're moving on to the weighing. So, by the way, if you're liking this video, uh, hit the like button to kind of explain that this is a, a different kind of setup. And um, hit subscribe button if you haven't already to kind of check out other content coming soon. Like I said, this is a more of an out of print kind of game, but um, based on its interest, based on I know that designers bringing out games in 2020, they're really keen to play this. And there's not too many videos out there. I thought it was quite an interesting one to bring to you. And I have been to Guatemala. You may have seen another video and you'll notice that I have been to all of these countries. And I'm actually gonna quickly show you the route that I took. So I started off in Mexico. This is kind of the Yucatan Peninsula up in a place called um, Cancun. So I flew into there. I then after two days researching it, came straight down to Belize on a 10 hour, 15 hour bus, crossing at the border, being one of only three people not to bribe the guards. I then crossed from there across to the, uh, went straight away from the, the beaches and went straight into the, the center, into the edge where a, a guy called Bear Grylls happened to film in a cave down here called ATM, great cave. And then I went across here to a place called Tikal, which is famous for its Incan ruins. So that was brilliant. I expected it to be packed. There were five people there. I then hitchhiked with a logger and then a motorbike to basically get down to a place called um, Flores, which is um, a bit too uh, touristy with the uh, young white kids, you might want to call it these days. So then from there, I chose to go all the way to um, the next best place to see Mayan ruins, which is called Copan, more for artifacts. And in Copan, uh, you can see macaws flying around. Now that's in Honduras. I then went across to El Salvador via Guatemala to um, kind of check out the capital, San Salvador. Didn't spend too long there, came back to Guatemala, went to a place called Antigua, which is a great place to check out some fantastic, um, what do you call it, I guess, architecture, I guess. Um, so very nice, nice cultural appreciations there. Back up to Mexico to San Cristobal de las Casas for a 24 hour, which turned out to be 27 hour, thanks to a, an incident, all the way back to, um, yeah, Cancun. So that is basically what the other side of the map looks like. But as you can see this side now, things no longer have uh, those, those locations on them. Now, bizarrely, even though it's the same map, it does actually feel as if um, it's actually going to have some kind of strange, uh, I don't know, because it's just a map, it feels strange having a person here, though. So you can randomise it, like in the game Azul. Like Azul, I think most people prefer the original layout, too. 
So that is actually um, how um, it's all done. I need to do the weighing as well. I need to tell you about some other videos that's coming along. So this is where 